Good evening. Buenas noches. Lord Speaker, Ambassadors, Secretaría de Estado de Telecomunicaciones e Infraestructuras Digitales, Ministers, my Lords, Honourable Members of the House of Commons and the House of Lords, Presidente de la Cámara de España, eh, José Luis Bonet y Presidente de la Cámara de Comercio de España en el Reino Unido, Eduardo Barrachina, Members and patrons of the Spanish Chamber of Commerce, Consejera Delegada de Litex, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, such a pleasure to be here tonight with all of you. Um, my remarks will mostly be in English, but I did want to say just a few words in Spanish. Para, bueno, daros eh, las gracias por venir. Sé que muchos habéis venido eh, es proceso, no solo de, de distintos lugares de aquí en el Reino Unido, también de España, para celebrar este eh, importante aniversario. Así que gracias por, por vuestro cariño esta noche y por uniros para una celebración que sin duda merece la pena, ese potencial de España en el Reino Unido y ese volumen tan importante de intercambios en todos los sentidos entre el Reino Unido y el Reino de España. First of all, I would like to thank you for this uh, invitation to celebrate together 135 years of the Spanish Chamber of Commerce here in the United Kingdom. It was 10 years ago, more uh, accurately 11 years ago, that both the Queen uh, Leticia and I, then as Prince and Princess of Asturias, had the honor and pleasure to join uh, to join all of you for a similar and also a special occasion. Then it was 125 years we were celebrating. This time, unfortunately, she cannot be with us, but indeed she did ask me to pass on her regards and her happy anniversary wishes to all of you. This is my first time in the UK since we attended the funerals of the late Queen Elizabeth II. Therefore, allow me tonight to begin my remarks paying tribute to, the one, to one of the greatest monarchs of British history. It will probably take years, if not decades, to fully understand her legacy after 70 years of service as Queen and Head of State. In my family, we keep very fond memories of the many occasions we have shared with Queen Elizabeth with Prince Philip, the late Duke of Edinburgh, and with all of the royal family. And of course, Queen Letitia and I remember very especially our state visit to the United Kingdom in July 2017. That was, uh, probably many of you don't know this, but that was Prince Philip's last state visit beside the Queen as host before he soon later discharged his duties and we always thanked him for that gesture. Today, this strong affinity continues, and I am certain it will develop and prosper in many new ways. I wish the best to His Majesty King Charles III as he rises to meet the challenges of a modern 21st century monarchy in a country with global significance and responsibilities. In Spain, we certainly look forward to receiving him and the Queen Consort for a state visit or whatever the occasion may be. At this point, I would like to thank him, thank King Charles for his warm welcome today at Clarence House, an extraordinarily warm meeting between two parliamentary monarchs united by family and personal ties. Of course, I also wish the new Prince and Princess of Wales much success in their new responsibilities. In the wake of such an extensive and remarkable experience, they are to follow and continue, indeed with their own touch and, person and personality. Ladies and gentlemen, history bounds Spain and the United Kingdom by ancient and deep-rooted ties. Not always have we agreed on everything, in fact, May I add, I, I seem to recall that there have been many times when we hardly agreed on anything at all. 
But indeed, what our two nations have often done is to lead history while looking beyond the oceans. Since the first Spanish globalization in the 16th century and the first British Industrial Revolution to the intense and co complex globalization of today, Spain and the UK have always led the way with a personality of their own. We're both now solid democracies. We share the same values and principles of freedom, pluralism, and solidarity. Back in 1886, the world was radically different, and yet we, Spaniards, were already establishing a permanent tradition trading mission in, here in London. The Spanish Chamber of Commerce in the United Kingdom was founded after the crucial trade agreement accepted by both British and Spanish trade negotiators, in which, for the first time in our long histories, we applied reciprocally the most favored nation clause. The latter meant that Britain and Spain committed to apply the best possible standards to their treatment of each other in their trade relationships. Since then, this clause has formed the basis of all trade agreements. As you know, it is nowadays the cornerstone of the World Trade Organization and, of course, the trade and cooperation agreement between the United Kingdom and the European Union, which governs our current trade relations after Brexit. Many events have taken place over these 135 years, some of them indeed very difficult, many others hopeful and successful. It is undeniable that during all that time, both our countries have traded and invested in each other. Indeed, throughout that time, the Spanish Chamber of Commerce has helped, has helped in the UK to promote the best interests of the economic relationships between our nations. The long history of this chamber teaches us that good principles and goodwill are essential to overcome most obstacles. Both our kingdoms are advanced economies that share the same values, and for that reason, our geographic and our geographic proximity, we are top trade partners. Spain is not only a friend of the UK, but also an important ally in several fields. And I'm not talking about defensive ally, which we are as well in the NATO framework. Our relation is stronger than ever, and Spanish companies are participating in many large projects and initiatives that transform and develop the British economy. This country is the second destination, as we know, for Spanish foreign direct investment, and that is why when Spanish companies go abroad, they're very likely to come here to this country. The dynamism, growth, and importance of this chamber is an eloquent example of this. In fact, since you represent such a, a special meeting point for British and Spanish businesses here, it is no surprise that four years ago you would adequately create a barometer of Spanish investments in the UK, which every year an analyzes Spanish investments in this country and gathers representatives from both governments. I, in fact, had a good look at it before I came here today. It would like, I would like to thank the board uh, for the extraordinary work it does. As you know, voluntary work, in whichever shape it may come, surely makes our societies better. We would not be here otherwise. There is commitment, there is sense of duty, and above all, there is a strong desire to strengthen the bilateral relations and exchanges between both our countries. I would also like to thank all the Spanish companies present here tonight, especially those of you who traveled from Spain for the occasion, as I did, to take part in this splendid celebration. Many of you play an essential role in the key sectors like construction, infrastructure, financial services, telecommunications, and it's a long list, sorry not to mention all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, today as we celebrate this 135th anniversary, 
I would like to congratulate you as one of our oldest chambers of commerce uh, out of close to 50 that operate around the world. With this anniversary, we're celebrating the continuity and importance of economic links, which are, and always will be, above all, links that develop, that help our societies prosper, both here in the UK and in Spain, and bring our citizens, corporations, and institutions much, much closer. The world, and indeed Britain, have drastically changed in the last few years. In Europe, we now witness a war that challenges the foundations upon which we have built our societies. Even so, however, the seriousness of that war, let alone the tragic loss of life and destruction suffered by the Ukraine, and the myriad of economic, political, and social consequences worldwide, we still have the UK and Spain an extraordinary opportunity to build on the solid foundation of our historic relationship. We therefore ought to continue our quest in order to make real our aspirations for an even more prosperous future in both our great nations. To achieve this, institutions that enhance the efforts of both our governments and civil societies like this very chamber are and will remain essential. My sincere congratulations on your 135th birthday and all my support in what is, I am quite sure, your determination to keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Enhorabuena, feliz aniversario, y espero que podamos celebrar muchos más. Gracias.